Well, now we're going to talk about planting healthy reproducing churches. Remember we said we, it's one thing to be concerned about planting more churches and reaching more people, but we're also concerned about the kind of churches we plant. We want them to be kingdom communities. We want them to be healthy churches. Realistically, if they're not healthy, they're not going to reproduce, or if they do, they're not going to reproduce and sustain very long. So this is, again, some information that whether you're a church planter or whether you're involved in an existing church, I believe these are going to be really important principles for you to keep in mind. And so we'll talk about six guidelines for healthy church development. And the first one is something we've spoken about and we'll speak about more before we're done. Give attention to the spiritual health of the leadership. A church is no healthier than the spiritual health of its leaders. And I've observed this very often, is that very typically a pastor will give a lot of attention to wherever the need seems to be the most urgent in the church. And uh, it's the old adage in English, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And so what very often happens is the pastor has his normal duties, preaching, visitation, and certain administrative duties and so on. And then most of his time spent with people is then spent with people who have a lot of needs, doing counseling. Now that's not a bad thing if that pastor is gifted in counseling, by all means, uh, do counseling. But what can end up happening is you've got, especially in a church plant, you've got a lot of people with a lot of needs. They're growing, they're going through growth pains in their spiritual lives, they're trying to get their lives in order, it's complicated. Um, and what can end up happening is you're spending all your time with needy people who have genuine needs, but you end up neglecting the spiritual leaders. And you sort of assume, well, no news is good news. I'm not hearing that they're having any problems, so we'll, we'll let them just kind of keep on and, and I'll focus on these people of all these needs. And I believe that's a mistake. Because I believe that just as Jesus did, he focused his energy increasingly on the leaders, on the 12 disciples. Because they would become the multipliers who would care for many of those other needs in the church. And so a key here to church health is for the pastor and the, and the leadership to be focusing on the spiritual health and well-being of those leaders. So what might that look like? That might mean that I meet for prayer with the elders regularly or individually to talk about how they're doing in their spiritual lives. Um, we would meet together for breakfast every couple of weeks, not to talk about church business, not to talk about other people's needs, not to plan anything, to just talk about how we're doing in our marriage, in our, our devotional lives, in our character development. We might read through little sections of the pastoral epistles and you know, apply that to our own lives and ministries. You see, it's worth it. It doesn't even necessarily have to take that much time to invest time in your spiritual leaders, especially even when they're not experiencing some kind of spiritual crisis or difficulty. Keep them healthy. That will set the spiritual tone of the church. Do you have leaders who are divided, who are contentious? You have leaders who their family life is out of order and chaotic? You have leaders who are not in a vibrant relationship with Jesus? They set the tone in the church. They're supposed to be the examples that others look to. If you've got strong leaders, you've got a strong core. And so you can have a lot of people with a lot of issues and a lot of problems in the church, but you've got to have that strong spiritual core. And if you're helping them be ministers to others, you're actually reproducing your ministry. In the end of the day, you're actually helping more people See, as one person, I can only help so many people. Remember Moses and Jethro? You know, Moses was trying to make all the decisions and do everything, and Jethro, the father-in-law, said, you're going to kill yourself. You can't do it all. You've got to appoint other people and delegate. Now, by my investing in the spiritual leadership of the elders, the deacons, 
ministry team leaders. I'm actually going to be reproducing myself and multiplying my ministry, and they will be able to. If I have good cell group leaders that are at a basic level equipped to care for the needs of others, that means as the pastor, I don't have to care for all those needs. And so investing in the spiritual health of the leaders is one of the most important things that you can do. Don't neglect that. Another one seems pretty straightforward, and that is to structure the church ministry according to biblical values and purposes. Now, that might seem pretty obvious, but sometimes a church can get caught up in so many different things that maybe aren't even that central to why they exist. Uh, there are a lot of good things that a church can do, but they may not be the best things. And especially in a church plant, you don't have a lot of energy. You know, you're usually, at least in the beginning, you're not a lot of people. And you can't do everything. You've got to set priorities. And so, for example, we said our priority is going to be strong preaching and worship and strong cell groups. So we're going to focus our energy on having good teaching and preaching and, and inspiring worship services. That was one way that we were reaching people. And we're going to have strong cell groups where we make good, strong disciples. That's our priority. Now, somebody comes along and says, well, we ought to have a choir in our church. Well, that's fine. But do we have really have the energy? Is that really a priority? Or somebody comes along and says, well, we, you know, we need to have a youth group or something. Well, that, you know, that's probably a good idea. But do we have the energy? Is that a priority now? So you want to keep the basic things, the basic ministries of the church strong and only expand out as it really fits the goal of the church and biblical purposes. And I think that that uh, book that's a few years old now by Rick Warren, The Purpose Driven Church, is actually not a bad book in that regard of really saying, look, gear your church towards being balanced and fulfilling biblical purposes and structure your ministry that way. Don't just do it because churches have always done it this way. Don't just do it because this is a tradition that you grew up with. Ask yourself, is this really contributing to the mission of the church? Is this contributing to us making disciples for Jesus? Is it contributing to us bringing new people into the kingdom? Is it contributing to us making an impact and changing lives and making our community a better place? You have to ask yourself those questions because you just won't be able to do everything. Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com.